Welcome to the Dump and Chase podcast. We're going to call this the warm-ups. We have a lot to get into this episode. Murray Gunty goes all Vince McMahon and wishes GM Jason Kohler the best of luck in all his future endeavors. We're left wondering why, and Jason is left with a closet full of Phantom's polo shirts. Brad Patterson takes on the double role of general manager and head coach, and most importantly, moves one parking spot closer to the Cavelli Center. We dig into the romance between Youngstown and every hockey player currently breathing in the state of Maryland. The big question is, who gets a rose and moves on to next week? You complete me. We talk about a kid from Japan who could hit the United States Hockey League like a modern-day Godzilla. If Godzilla was 5'8", a buck 40, and had hands softer than a Swedish masseuse. All this and more, starting now. Shut up and sit down. Hello, Phantoms fans. Welcome to the Dump and Chase podcast. I'm Sam Olmstead, And I'm Justin Irwin. Let's do it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Dump and Chase podcast. Uh, we're calling this episode Maryland on My Mind, and we will definitely get to it later. Uh, what's going on with that? Uh, I'm here with Justin. Uh, last episode was about six weeks ago. Took some time off, did a little traveling. Uh, me and the family went to Niagara Falls. Nothing exciting there. Nobody wants to hear about my uh, vacation. Uh, Justin, on the other hand, traveled all the way down to Cannonsburg for the Phantoms main camp and only walked away with two misdemeanors while you were down there. So a uh, pretty successful trip for you, I would say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, CD Motel. Um, I guess I got lucky. Kevin Stevens didn't show up. So, um, yeah, <laughs> only two misdemeanors. The, the police chase didn't last all too long. That was kind of disappointing. But nice area down there. Um, pretty decent barn we played in until the ice broke at the end of the second uh, All-Star game. But, you know, it's mid-June, so. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we kind of saw that with, what was that, game four of the Clark Cup finals. Yeah, the fog game. Yeah, when you what happens when you play hockey in June, that was... So, uh, getting into this episode, of course, the uh, big news... Uh, that we were able to kind of throw in at the last second on the last episode, but we're definitely going to get into it a lot more here, uh, was the release of now former Phantoms general manager Jason Kohler. This one, I want to say, and kind of people we've talked to, it kind of, it came as a surprise to people, is basically the way it looks is uh, USHL draft was May 6th and 7th, and then... From what we were told, uh, Jason Kohler was let go on May 24th, which was a Friday. Now, you caught wind of it um, that next Wednesday, May 29th. Yeah. Yeah, you sent out a tweet about it um, actually at 3.39 p.m. on May 29th um, about what had happened to Jason Kohler. And interestingly enough... It was exactly three hours after that, 6.39 p.m., when the Phantoms posted an article uh, discussing not so much uh, Kohler being let go, but Brad Patterson being promoted to not only head coach, but now general manager as well. That seemed a little odd. It took them five days to announce it, and they only did it after your tweet. Yeah, and we both, I think, talked to some people were given very, very similar stories. So I don't know, maybe we were talking to the same person. Mine was um, very anonymous. Um, <laughs> um, but I was able to verify a lot of his information. So I can believe most of it. One of the things I was pointed to, I think a lot of people saw immediately, was that the front office page uh, of the you know team roster had changed dramatically about that time. Looks like we now have like about five different vice presidents of hockey, hockey operation. Not really sure what that's supposed to mean. A lot of them are names that I don't think any of us have ever heard of. But most of those names are uh, people who come from the uh, Maryland Black Bears system. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, timing and optics, it really left kind of a lot of people a little bit confused. Maybe some people bitter about 
uh, look, uh, the optics here looks kind of like a takeover. Yeah, and that is a word you're probably going to hear a lot in this episode is optics. Um, a lot, you know, other fans that we have talked to, um, you know, people that you, you know, all the years that you've been there going to games, people that you know, um, you know, some people that I have talked to, that's, that's going to be a big word for us in this episode will be optics. Cause right now it doesn't look good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. I think both of us immediately, our inboxes were blowing up. Um, basically that's all I could do was point people at to that, uh, hockey operations page and the bios on there and uh, it was an interesting couple of days there trying to sort things out but um the press release the phantoms put out barely even mentioned i think they just mentioned that brad patterson replaced jason kohler he was not mentioned anymore um in that article so he was kind of yeah he was he he was yeah, he was just mentioned as he Brad Patterson was taking over for former general manager uh Jason Kohler. That was the only that was his only mention in the article. Yeah. So this th- this kind of ties into um because some of the information we got pointed to um as far as an organization um as as far as their draft strategy going into uh the phase 1 and phase 2 draft was wanting to see um more of a Maryland influence on Youngstown's roster. That was something you pointed out to me on day one, uh, when we found out that, uh, Black Bear Sports Group had, uh, taken over, uh, Troy Loney's ownership stake in the Phantoms was that you hoped that it wasn't going to turn into where Youngstown was just going to become a pipeline for, uh, kids that are in the Maryland system, in the Black Bears system. And, Maybe that is the case. Maybe that is not the case. But again, right now, optics are everything. And from what we were told is that basically they wanted more kids from the Maryland system to be drafted. And if you actually go through and look at the draft, you really didn't see any Maryland kids until the very later stages of the phase two draft. That is correct. I don't know. Um, Again, you know, I was just told this with a heavy degree of anonymity. So another source, a little less anonymous. I can't name them. Um, uh, somebody who is not affiliated with the team, but has some connections within the league. Also was very quick to point out that the Davis Cod incident, as well as we had had some other losses when it came to uh, some of our tenders, didn't pan out. Previously, uh, Jacob Tortora bolted on us, and possibly some kids that we had tendered um, in the past uh, linked directly to Kohler did not pan out. I won't name any names. Again, then it could be a combination of all of the above. But the key word is optics. So (laughs) (laughs) uh, we have to keep going back to that. But at the same time, we could be completely wrong in all of this. I, you know, we'll at least put that out there. We were told what we were told. We did our best to run down, you know, everything we could to either verify or, you know, debunk what we were told. And in this case, we had a lot more verification of what we were told than... Than debunking, yeah. You know, somebody saying... Somebody saying, no, no, that's not the case at all. Yeah, but again, I mean, most of what we have is just hearsay, um, Mm -hmm. speculation. So we have to take all that with a grain of salt and just see how things go going forward. Now, it's funny you should mention you bring up Davis Codd. Uh, Of course, you know, you all remember Davis Codd, a phantom alumnist. A uh, lot of great memories of that kid. Uh, the time that he sat down at a table and put on a Phantoms jersey and signed a contract. I mean, who will ever forget that? Yeah. yeah. Um, just the, the, the memories uh, he has given the city of Youngstown. Um, actually, uh, I believe the uh, high school he goes to in Michigan uh, recently gave him some kind of like achievement award for all of his sports and academics and everything like that, which I thought was really cool. Uh, of course, about a week later, uh, he transferred to another high school. So sad, sad to see it happen, but par for the course. Yeah. And no, we're not making this up. 
Well, we are, but <laughs> just <laughs> you know what? After that ordeal, I'm gonna take my shot. I don't care. So <laughs> okay, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> but, but anyways, um, yeah. So of course, another thing that we heard that did uh, kind of play out. Uh, was the possibility of some of the players kind of being unhappy with what was going on, the direction of the team. Uh, and then some kids that were expected to come back next season, uh, jumping ship, going to other leagues, basically. Uh, they can't really jump to other teams in USHL just like that. But uh, we did hear that uh, from a couple different people. And then that kind of sort of did play out a little bit. Yeah, I don't think it was actually as bad as was expected but no again i believe it was uh tristan amonti yeah no i believe at first it was uh steve holtz and then tristan amonti um both of those players announced that next season they will be playing for the uh pennington v's of the uh british columbia hockey league and then uh jay o'brien who was a phantoms draft pick back in 2015 only played about five games for the phantoms uh was an affiliate uh he spent last season at providence college kind of uh brett murrayed out of providence the phantoms still held his rights we were one of the options uh he also went to the v's uh in the bchl yeah and um former team usa um forward danny Waite. If anybody remembers him from last season, um, especially after that little brawl up in Plymouth, he also is going to the Pennington V's, a very interesting team to watch next season. Uh, I believe they have some deep pockets up there now. <laughs> that doesn't happen up there. So bas basically right now, it's safe to say we know more about the Pennington V's than we do the Youngstown Phantoms right now. <laughs> Uh, a little bit of hyperbole, but yeah, it, it, <laughs> with, with their roster acquisitions right now, I think we know more about them than we do about the Phantoms. So, uh, uh a heck of a team they're going to have, uh, uh, next season. So yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, we, we may, we may be celebrating a, a BCHL championship, uh, come next springtime. Beautiful country up there. Yep. Beautiful country. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Do you ever think sometimes we should just be thankful we don't get paid to do this? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. If we were getting paid for this, expectations would be so much higher. Think. <clears throat> oh. That's that's that, that, that that's the uh, Dump and Chase podcast mission statement. We set the bar low. We never disappoint. You, you're not ever going to limbo under this one. <laughs> <laughs> so okay anyway optics of maryland influence yeah you just seriously just read that off the <laughs> yeah well we're gonna be editing so yeah all right so moving on from all that nonsense um again the word optics and one thing uh many people have reached out to us and have pointed out uh that kind of just is not really rubbing people the right way um, is a lot of this kind of back and forth between the Phantoms and uh, like the Maryland Black Bears, the actual NA, the uh, North American Hockey League team, uh, a lot of back and forth between them. And some of it gets a little odd with the gifts and everything else. It's a little strange looking. Yeah, um, it's kind of creepy. Yeah, m my gripe on that was we had... Because basically, unless you listened to this podcast or you followed like the USHL, like Twitter and Facebook account, you had no idea that Brett Murray, you know, was named, you know, all USHL first team that Jack Malone was named to the all academic team. You know, that stuff was never really put out by the team. But like a lot of, you know, a lot of promotion for these development camps and kind of this back and forth between them and the Black Bears. It may be something that's completely harmless that you know it may not be something that was intentional but again it's just the optics of it right now don't look all that great and i mean and that was something there that i've heard from a few people yeah yeah that was that was especially after the the color uh firing um yeah that was immediately what we heard from pretty much everyone and you know this goes back to when maryland bought out uh the loanies 
I, I had made comments about, you know, I, you obviously heard me mention, you know, that we were now uh, expensive advertisement for Maryland youth hockey. And, you know, that's exactly what I meant with the, these camps. So, I mean, again, it's not so much of a bad thing, I think, but uh, it was laid on really thick. Yeah, you saw, you saw a lot of, um, you know, announcements of players who were going to be at these development camps, uh, you know, going to these tryout camps and, you know, kids that were in the Maryland system and then seeing phrases from the black bears like twitter accounts saying you know come play for us you know you'll get opportunities you know hashtag loyalty and it's you know and it you know and it's you know if they want to run it as kind you know just as kind of a pipeline system that's fine but if we're getting sent the players who deserve to be playing in the ushl then great but you know that's kind of the fear is that we're going to be seeing kids who maybe don't have what it takes to play in the USHL, but they're going to be pipelined up to Youngstown anyway. Um, and again, may not be the case, but right now that's what a lot of people are reading it as when they see a lot of these things on social media. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the USHL has never really worked with like a affiliate system where one team is really a designated affiliate. I know in the past, you know, because of the proximity, we've worked closely with Johnstown um, just because it's easy to, you know, move kids a few hours than a few time zones. This league is about putting the top talent in the country, in the world, on the ice. I, I guess if anything at this point, I would want to... As far as me speaking right now directly to the team, the social media game needs to be stepped up a little bit. It has gotten better, I think, in the past uh, month or so with the draft, and I have seen a little bit more, hey, you know, here's what's going on. But um, yeah, there was definitely some stuff missed, and that's communication has been something I've been harping on going back to the beginning of last season. So to me, a good chunk of the time social media can be an annoyance but at the same time it's how you get news out there it's how you you know inform people it's how you educate people and you know and we've talked about before you know we went to you know the meeting as far as getting explanations as far as next year's season ticket packages and next year's season ticket packages are actually you know compared to what we've had in the past few years is actually a pretty good deal they have going on this year and you're not really seeing promotion about that on social media. You're not really seeing them, you know, putting it out there. It's the off season. You don't have a ton of hockey news to go off of. Yeah. Believe us, we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, this is when you are out trying to sell, uh, yeah. you know, and there's just not a whole lot. Yeah. And it's, I, I mean, for, be <laughs> for better or for worse, social media is here to stay. So, I mean, it it's free advertising. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing right there is this is not something that should be hard. It's free. Uh, you know, you have an intern or somebody do it. You know, I realize that, you know, this time of year, you're also trying to sell $400 um, a pop camps. And, you know, that's what pays a lot of the bills for um, the ownership. But we have to sell some tickets for this team for next season. So. No, absolutely. And I mean, not, I mean, not even like full season season ticket packages. I mean, they have smaller packages that people can get in on and that come with perks and all this other kind of stuff. And it's just it's just stuff that's not being talked about. And quite, you know, it is the off season, but this is the time to be talking about it. And it's just it's not, ha you know, it's just it's just more of this kind of goofy back and forth with Maryland than it is. Yeah, it looks like our uh, private chats with the with the gifts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's just kind of creepy to have out in public. It's just, I, I guess I would implore the team. There are people here in the area, you know, the Youngstown, Mahoning, Trumbull, Columbiana, you know, county area. You know, we're all here. 
And honestly, a lot of people just feel like they're not being spoken to from the team uh, as far as, you know, next season and, you know, trying to keep people interested and getting people excited. So to me, I definitely think the team kind of needs to step it up there. Uh, haven't done the greatest job so far this off season doing that. Yeah, and that's kind of the, the same. I We both get that from people is that they just don't feel like they're they're the the intended target here <laughs> so we'll get away from we'll get away from uh, uh we try to you know stay away from the negative on the show unfortunately some things like this pop up and you know yeah if if anything to each other we feel obligated to bring this stuff up and talk about it um and you know and believe me i mean i understand the 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 reality of the situation is you know, with the new ownership group, we do have people who at least have, you know, a business plan. It might not be the plan that we're used to, but, you know, as opposed to previous ownerships that I won't mention, um, I think they have a better grasp of the realities of the economic situation when running a hockey team. So, you know, I, I know what they're trying to do. Um they're trying to sell camps. They're trying to sell youth hockey, and yeah. that you know that's a that's a cutthroat market, and we will see how things play out. Well, that yeah, absolutely. We don't want anybody to get into the impression that we're sitting here trashing you know Black Bear Sports Group. We're trashing Murray Gunty, and you know, there these are people that are way way smarter than us when it comes to this kind of stuff. So it's. You know, like I said, it's 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 not so much trashing on their business model. It's not criticizing them for every single decision they make. What we're doing is basically speaking on behalf of the fans who are here in the area who do actually go to these games, you know, and would like to go to games that there are more than, you know, five, six hundred people in the stands. You know, we want to see big crowds there. We want to just, you know, high energy night in and night out. And it just really seems like a lot of what has been going on so far this offseason has kind of turned some people off to it. All right, so we'll jump away from all that and we'll head into a little trip down to Cannonsburg that you took. Uh, Again, came out of it with community service. Good job. Now, being there at tryout camp, I mean, you've been to several tryout camps. Well, I mean, with with it just having, you know, Kohler being let go, Patterson taking over. Um, I mean, like, what did the atmosphere feel like uh, as far as as camp went along? Um, Everything actually was very normal, (laughs) more normal than actually a lot of camps I've seen in the past. A lot of energy out on the ice. I was there basically Saturday and Sunday, saw most of the games. I think I got a chance to view all of the players that were supposed to be there. There were no rosters, so basically all the information I got was based off of uh, kids' helmets, uh, matching up teams and logos and numbers. So if I got anybody wrong, I apologize ahead of time. I guess probably the easiest ones to recognize. Um, Who did you see as far as who was on... Uh, the Phantoms roster last season. Um, people I noticed: uh, Jason DeBay, Nick Jensen, uh, Connor McEachern was actually there. We'll talk about that later. Um, John Larkin, Aiden Gallagher, um, Ben Schoen, Josh DeLuca, uh, Trevor Kuntar. So there were uh, a decent amount of returning players. Now, a few of those players, like McEachern, um, he was at tryout camp, and then uh, the news came out that he had decommitted from wherever he was going. I can't remember off, right off the bat, but uh, he... Uh, Robert, Mo- Robert Morris. Robert Morris, yes. And then uh, he's looking to be going to Penn State this upcoming season. Yeah, yeah. So I guess they had to have a hearing of some sort um to see if he would be eligible to go to penn state this season so i'm pretty sure he was in camp um probably just in case that didn't go his way from what i've heard it has so he will probably be at penn state and not returning but nonetheless it's good to have a uh, veteran talent in camp when you got a lot of kids mm-hmm. what was it aiden gallagher was another one that was there yeah 
And as as far as we know right now, he's supposed to be committed to Michigan State this next season. Yeah, as well, um, there's a kid that we got in the uh, Central Illinois dispersal draft, Bradley Merrick. Uh, he was in camp. He looked pretty good. Um, I believe he was also committed to Michigan State next season, so I don't know if there's something to that. Um, but he looked pretty good on the ice as well. Okay, so um, to the best of your, like like you said, without having rosters, to the best of your knowledge, um, any other kids there that stood out to you, uh, some of the newcomers this year? Um, there was a kid who's played some affiliate games for us, Cade Lemur. Um, Lemur. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, hadn't really stood out when he was an affiliate, really. Um, however, he looked really good in camp. Fairly large, not real tall, so he's kind of compact, kind of a bulldog. Um, I'd really like to see him grinding in, uh, in the corridors and throwing his weight around in front of the net. A uh, North American Hockey League kid, played last year a little bit for Johnstown, went over to Wilkes-Barre Scranton, great name, Anthony Mastromonica. He looked to be a pretty decent uh, acquisition if he uh, joins the team. Another guy who looked very physical, large guy. There was a um, USPHL premier kid from the Chicago Cougars, Kevin Crawley. Another guy who, not the biggest guy, but looked like he can uh, play. And, you know, there were a few Maryland Black Bear kids there. Um, Not quite as many as I had expected. Mm -hmm. There was a kid, uh, George Vanakis. He played with the NAHL Black Bears last year. Um, Stats don't really stand out, but he looked to have a little grit to his game. Not a bad skater. You know, I could see him making at least uh, camp here in a few weeks. Wouldn't be out of the range of possibility for him to end up on the affiliate list or, you know, maybe make the roster. Mm -hmm. Another Maryland product kid we uh, picked up in the uh, entry draft. Last pick, Ethan Oyang, young, 15, soon to be 16. Maybe not a kid you see a whole lot of this year, but... You know, another guy you could see on the affiliate list or, you know, see him in a year or two. Those are all the names I really have on tap right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, that would have been the uh, Saturday you were at that camp. Um, I was at home. I uh, was getting uh, getting stuff together to, uh, you know, leave for Niagara Falls and everything, uh, which is why I didn't go to camp. At, at one point, you you were pretty much blowing up my phone. You were keeping me updated throughout the day, but at one point you were pretty much blowing <laughs> up my phone, I guess I could say. Um, that was, uh, you were starting to see a little bit of chemistry going on, or maybe a lot of chemistry, uh, between Ben Schoen and the Phantoms, uh, I believe, like 22nd round draft pick. Uh, kid we featured on the last episode, Yusaku Ando. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'd... Uh kind of done our research on him we were really excited about him when it came down to the uh two all-star games uh him and shown really stood out on the ice um two young kids out there uh both of them really incredible uh hockey iq uh uh stick handling skating uh vision and they seem to feed off of each other out there pretty well right off the bat. I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing those two online at some point in the future. Now, the goaltenders, of course, you're going to have many goaltenders in camp. To you, I, I, I believe the one you were kind of getting a little excited about was uh, Dominic Bassey uh, in his play yeah. in camp. Yeah, him and Colin Purcell, but yeah... Um, Bessie was somebody, you know, fairly well touted, you know, at the time he was on the central scouting reports. This was before the draft and he was drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks. Not a whole lot of viewing of him. So not wasn't really sure what he was all about. Excellent athletic goaltender. Um, decent size. Um really really played the first part of the all-star games well had a shutout the 
when he played on Saturday night and just uh, really a dominant goaltender. Now that that you you mentioned the uh, NHL draft, actually I have it written down here somewhere. Yeah, uh, Dominic Bassey was taken in the sixth round, uh, 167th overall by Chicago. That scared me a little bit. Uh, the the last time uh, we had to deal with a goaltender drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks uh, was a little messy. <laughs> so it, I kind of paused there for a second and be like, I I hope I hope I hope this works out better for us than the last time. Uh, of course, referring to uh, Wouter Peters from a couple years ago. Who now who now is in Finland, uh, playing in like a tier nine beer league or something like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And from what I remember, I think the Blackhawks were trying to blame us for their bad decisions. Uh, yeah, much well, like me trying to blame other people for my bad decisions. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, but 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 if you go look at the stats, like like his, if you go look at like his last three or four years, probably his best season was with Youngstown. Now that's not saying much. It was a pretty low bar. But if you just look straight at the numbers, uh, he actually did better with Youngstown than he did in other situations. So I I don't know if you could fully blame yeah. Youngstown for uh, that train wreck, but. <sighs> But we digress. But I digress. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, since well, since you mentioned that, I'll go ahead and bring that up now. Uh, with the NHL draft, of course, uh, everybody remembers Jack Malone. Uh, he was a uh, six-round pick, 180th overall by Vancouver. So uh, definite big congratulations to Jack Malone. Yeah, nobody more deserving. Um, really a hardworking player. So, um, you know, that's the lesson there is hard work. Uh, beats talent when talent doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the cliche. But uh, he's a uh, he's a Cornell University commit. Uh, but now will also be in the Vancouver system, and at some point might be reunited with Ivan Kolbikov, who is also in the Vancouver system. Uh, I believe still at this point. Yeah, well, he likes to wander. Yeah, <laughs> out of the net, around the AHL, just whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord! Oh Ivan, we we miss you though. <laughs> um, <laughs> never a dull moment. So one of the uh, trappings of the United States Hockey League is I uh, you we only have these kids for so long. It's not the NHL where they're signing eight year contracts and sticking around forever. They're not around that often. I I believe somebody came out with an article not that long ago that on average teams have like a seventy five percent turnover rate every season. I think we may have gone actually a little bit higher than that. Right now, as far as p kids who were on the team last year who should be on the team this upcoming season, um, we have Kuntar, we have Schoen, we have Jensen, we have Larkin. Smeknov's on that list, but you said he wasn't in camp. I did not see him, no. And then, you know, you have Aiden Gallagher, you have uh, the other one that you named, it's not coming to me here, that were there, but... As far as we know, they're committed to Michigan State this upcoming season. So it, yeah. it it's basically tr trying this time of year to make a roster prediction is pretty ridiculous. But it just looking at that list right there already tells us. And then with Steve Holtz jumping ship to, uh, you know, more frozen pastures along with uh, Tristan Amante uh, cuts a couple names off of that list. Actually, the ocean keeps it uh, pretty temperate up there. So. Well, now, well <laughs> nowadays, apparently it's been a little warm up there lately, but... <clears throat> that that's for a whole different kind of podcast, not this one. <laughs> Get off my soapbox. But yeah, um so definitely this is a season we're looking at a pretty massive turnover uh as far as the roster from last year into this year. Now, after they have the, to the best of my understanding, um after the main camp, they will, you know, they will go ahead and select their roster. But of course, we don't see it until right before the season starts, and that has something to do with USA Hockey, uh, and when they finalize their rosters, uh, you would know way more about that than I would, so. Yeah, well, yeah, um, basically, after the camp we just had, they submit, I believe, a 45-man uh, roster you have until actually tomorrow is the deadline to whittle that down to 30 men. I should state for the record, tomorrow is, for us right now, is Monday, July 9th. Yeah, yeah, July 9th is the 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 last day to get it down to 30 men on your protected list. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have more 
you know, players, but they are still free agents who could go wherever they like. Uh, September 1st is when USA Hockey, they publish the uh, list of players that teams have protected, meaning they own their USHL rights. Um, No other team can do anything about that. The 30-man list will be uh, published on September 1st. Usually we also get an affiliate list at that point in time, which changes massively immediately after that. Mm -hmm. Uh, September 24th is when they have to make cuts down to 23 men. That's when you start seeing a lot of players start to move. If there's going to be trades, um, free agent players will show up on other teams' rosters. Uh, their training camps, then usually things don't get really finalized until last minute. September 27th, I believe, is when we're supposed to open the season uh, with the Fall Classic. So I've also heard that right now we're we're waiting on rosters, and um, what I've heard is that this year every team is pretty ticked at how the, the rosters are playing out, so... <laughs> uh i guess they're still juggling things around on that as well well it, it, it wouldn't be the ushl if somebody wasn't angry <laughs> at everything so yeah so yeah so uh the players we named earlier as far as the ones that were at camp uh that were on the team last year uh the goaltender dominic bassi um several uh sources tweeted out uh that he would in fact be on youngstown's roster this upcoming season uh Based on what you saw in camp, that was pretty much a foregone conclusion anyways. Yeah. And then um, Yusako Ando himself, who we talked about earlier, we featured on the last episode, uh, he himself tweeted out that he had signed a contract with Youngstown. Now, whether that means that he will actually be on the roster or, you know, if he'll just end up being an affiliate, we're, again, until the, until the uh, final roster comes out, we don't know. Yeah, there's there's a long way to go here still, so... Yeah, you and you've said before you gave up a long time ago trying to predict rosters before they were actually released. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you still have um, several weeks of camps. Anything can happen. Ando, he, you know, looks great um, offensively. Uh, I'm sure they'll want to test his defense a little bit and just make sure he's physically ready. He's a, you know, going to be 16. He's still on the small side for his age uh i mean i think he comes in at uh 130 and i think they dunked him before they took that uh (laughs) so want to make sure that you know he's going to be physically ready for the the contact um but you know uh we that's what camps are for so that's going to be about it for us. Um, future episodes, we keep sitting here saying we don't anticipate it. You know, we don't anticipate anything. And then uh, the whole Jason Kohler thing happens and <laughs> throws a wrench into that. Short of the Cavelli Center closing down and being used as a giant greenhouse, I can't think of anything else that anything else major they could really pull. But this team has surprised us before. If nothing major comes up, because it's once camps are over and everything, it's going to be a dead period anyway. So we anticipate probably not until the end of August, beginning of September, when we'll be back again, uh, starting getting closer to the season, starting get, to get a better idea of rosters and everything else like that. I'm not going to ask you if you have any final thoughts. I've learned my lesson. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I already know what the answer is going to be, so... Uh, Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, Any comments, suggestions, uh, you want to put in your two cents, put them in the comments below. Our social media uh, links are in the the, uh, description below. And other than that, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon.